What do I do with the data? That seems to be the common question that people have when it concerns the instrumentation labs, especially within the field of the UV vis spectroscopy. So right now you are probably sitting on some data and you don't know what to do with it. You don't know the types of calculations that we're after. And maybe some of you don't even know what the purpose of the lab was. And that's going to be the purpose of these videos. The purpose of these uh, lecture videos for the laboratory portion is to kind of get you into the path of realizing what we are wanting from these lab assignments and what those grade sheets are all about and what the lab was all about. So we're going to start with the first UV Viz lab and that was the UV Viz intro. So what I want to do in the very beginning is just to give you a quick overview of what you should have already done, right? So what we have done is that we've taken a compound like benzene and we put a certain microliter amount of benzene into a volumetric flask. Okay, so there we go. And we dilute it up to the line with the proper solvent. Whatever solvent that was, hopefully you pick the right one. Okay, so we made a benzene solution. Now, I'm going to come over to the side for a minute, and I'm going to say to go ahead and calculate the concentration of this benzene solution that you made, and this is concentration will be in molarity. So what you need to do with your numbers for every solution that you have made is to calculate a molarity based on the amount of volume that you have put in. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, look at the numbers, right? So we've got microliter of benzene. And I'm going to put that over 1 and I'm going to do a conversion. So microliter on top, microliter on the bottom, and I need it to get into liter. So let me do that micro a little bit better. Okay. So that converts it over to liter, but in order to do molarity, I need moles per liter, right? And microliter is not going to give me moles of benzene that I've added into this flask. That's what I'm after. I need mole of benzene. Okay, so microliter on top, microliter on the bottom, that converts over to a liter. And then, well, I can maybe use density in order to do that, but if I use benzene's density, gram per milliliter, I need the milliliter unit in order to make this calculation work for me. So liter on top, liter on bottom, I need to go to mil. Okay, so once I'm in milliliter, I can then go to gram by using the density number. So I'm just going to come out here to the top and I'm going to put this is the density of your sample, whether it's benzene or MIBK or acetone or whatever you decided to use, benzyl alcohol was the fourth, whatever you decided to use, the density goes there. Now that will give me grams of benzene. But again, for molarity, I need moles. So I need to go another step further. So I'm going to come over to the side and gram on top, gram on the bottom. I need to go to moles of benzene. And I can do this by using, of course, formula weight. That's what we're after here. So formula weight will tell me the number of grams for every mole that I've got. Okay, so this will give me the molarity of my benzene solution. And I need to do this for all of them, all of them, all the way down. And these need to be on a spreadsheet. So these are Excel numbers. So I will show you an Excel template a little bit later on, further into the lecture video or the lab prep video. But this is the first step that each of you should take when it concerns the calculation for the lab. Take the microliters of the sample, whether it's benzene, MIBK, benzyl alcohol, acetone, whatever you've decided to run, in that proper solvent. So we've got microliters, three microliters maybe for one. Microliters goes into the conversion and I need to convert the three microliters over into mole so that way I can turn around and plug it into the molarity equation. So once I have the mole from the equation up above, I'm then going to divide it 
by the size of the volumetric flask. So what did you dilute that sample in, right? Was it 50 milliliters? Was it 25 milliliters? Was it a 10 milliliter volumetric? That is the volume that goes on the bottom of that equation, and that will give me molarity of benzene. I do this again for each sample with each volume. You've ran four in total, so you had two per, which means you do this eight times. And all of this should be represented on the spreadsheet itself. So here in the lab document, you're going to see up at the very top, it says organic solutions. These were the four that you were supposed to have ran. Benzene, MIBK, benzyl alcohol, and acetone. Those are the four that I keep referring to in the prep video. And then each one of those, you had to do two solutions apiece. What we are going to call a low concentration and a high concentration. So benzene, you did three microliters in a 10 mil volumetric flask with cyclohexane as a solvent. And then you did five microliters uh, of cyc or benzene and 10 milliliters of cyclohexane in a volumetric flask. So those are the four, and they're two apiece, so that gives me a total of eight. So that's what we keep referring to in the lab. Now let's take a look at one of the Excel spreadsheets to kind of figure out how the best way possible to work this information into the spreadsheet itself. So in my spreadsheet, what you're seeing is that up here at the very top, I've kind of categorized these out to make the spreadsheet look a little bit cleaner. So I've blocked the benzene off up at the very top. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to see the D, which represents density for benzene, 0.879. And then you're going to see the FW for formula weight, which is 78.11 for benzene itself. Okay, well, I've used a three microliter sample. So in Excel, what I have done is that I've allowed it to do the calculation for me. So I've taken three microliters, I converted that over to liter, and then I've taken the liter, converted that to milliliter, I've taken those milliliters, and convert it that to gram using the density value that I have plugged into Excel. Then I've taken the gram and converted it over to moles using the formula weight for benzene. And then from that point, I've taken the formula weight, which led me to mole, and divided it by the size of volumetric flask that I used in the lab. And for me, it was 10 milliliter. So that's the number that's going here. This was a 10 milliliter volumetric flask. So it gives me a calculated molarity for my three microliter sample, and it gives me a calculated molarity for my five microliter sample. And that's the molarity that I will then use in the lab calculations from this point on. All right, so what else did the lab make me do? Well, once I made this solution, I then ran this solution on a UV vis. Okay, so I put this solution in a UV vis and I scanned it. So on the scan feature, what happened is that I probably got a spectra. Depending on what it was, it could have been a very clean one peak. It could have been a busy six or seven peak spectra. You just don't really know until you scan it. And that was one of the purposes of the lab. So purpose number one was were you able to find what we are calling all of the lambdas, and I'm not going to put lambda max here, I'm just going to put all of the lambdas that were associated with that compound. So in the spreadsheet, I want to make sure that I clearly identify that, right? So think about what you did in the lab. You scanned the benzene sample, you zoomed in, you zoomed out, you took a look at what was going on, you try to hone in on the problem areas that you couldn't find with the first run through, and on the spreadsheet, you need to make sure that you clearly identify that. So here I see a column. 
It says Lambda Max. And I've just listed the Lambda Maxes from the textbook. And this came from the Sattler, right? So with this column, these values are all from the Sattler UV Vis Spectroscopy Reference Book. So 268, 260.5, 254, 248, 243, 239, and 233. That means that benzene's got seven peaks that I should have picked up in the lab when I ran it. Well, it also listed what we're calling the E, and the E is the molar absorptivity. So the molar absorptivity we talk about in a minute, but all of this was referenced as well. This came straight from the reference Sattler textbook. That's all that it was, okay? So these numbers were just transposed over. What I've done in the next column is I've made a column with three microliters and five microliters, and I've just put an X here, meaning I found those. So that means that when I ran my three micro or when I ran the five micro, I don't have an X in the first row because maybe I had a hard time picking up the 268. And this shows me, yes, I had a hard time picking up the 268. From that point on, the 260, the 254, the 248, I was able to find those. So I denote that with an X on the spreadsheet to let you know and to let everybody else know that I did find this wavelength, I did find this lambda, and I'm reporting that, and I've attached my UV this spectra to that to prove that I found it. So that's what these two columns are going to be representing here. And the next column over, these are straight from the UV Viz tickets. So what happened is that once I scanned this sample and tried to find the lambdas, on the UV Viz ticket itself, it's going to give me absorbance values. And it will probably say maximum and minimum. So I'm looking for the maximum here. That's what we're all about. So the absorbances that are on the maximum, which means at the peak up here at the very top, that is what we're after. That's what we need. So these absorbance values come straight from the ticket. I don't do any calculations with those at all. So that's what you're seeing here in red. This is the absorbance values for the three microliter sample, and these are the absorbance values for the five microliter sample. Again, I leave the first one empty because I didn't find the 268. So I don't have absorbance values for the 268 lambda. Well, I've got the absorbance values from all the rest of them. They came from my ticket, and I put those into the Excel spreadsheet because of that reason. Now, maybe you didn't have trouble finding 268. Maybe you found the 233, or you couldn't find the 233, and you found the 268 easy breezy. If so, that's fine. You just need to make sure that that comes clearly across in the spreadsheet when you do it. Okay, now the part of the video where we get to talk about the calculations. What really am I after? What do I want? Okay, well, let's think about it for a minute. First, we have absorbance, and the absorbance is coming from the ticket. Next, we've got molarity, and molarity is something that I have calculated from the very beginning. So, if I go back and take a look at one of the most important pieces of UV spectroscopy and the equations that come along with it, you're going to see Beer's Law represented quite a bit, and we're going to be using it quite a bit, and that's A equals EBC. This is something that we've talked about in class so many times, and we've done examples with Beer's Law so many times. And the A is going to represent the absorbance value from the machine. The E is the absorptivity value that I'm looking for. B is, of course, the path length of the cuvette. And C is the concentration in molarity. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to handle the data that's coming from the UV-Vis ticket and what to do with it from that point on.